Welcome to the video Factors and Roots for Higher Order Polynomials and this is number 5 on Factors and Roots. We're going to build on the earlier videos on Factors and Roots and therefore assume that the reader is now familiar with Factors and Roots for first and second order polynomials. So the specific focus of this video is how do I factorise higher order polynomials? Here's an example to get you started. Let the polynomial be given as h of w equals h plus 2 times h times h minus 3. And you could write that out or expand it to give h cubed minus h squared minus 6h. Now clearly you can see there are three factors here and there are three roots. So if I underline you can see there's a factor h plus 2 which gives you a root at minus 2. There's a factor h which gives you a root at 0, and a factor h minus 3, which gives you a root at 3. The question you might want to ask is, if I had only been given h cubed minus h squared minus 6h, could I have determined the positions of these roots, and therefore the factors? Now, students will realise, in fact, that the roots of h of w were relatively obvious because one of the factors was obvious. So let's have a look. We've got h of w equals h cubed minus h squared minus 6h and it should be clear to you that there is a common factor of h in this equation and therefore I can take that factor out and I can write it, there you are, I've taken h out, as h times h squared minus h minus 6. So it's now factorised into a factor which is first order and a factor which is second order. Once that factor h has been removed, the remaining factor is a quadratic, and therefore you can use your standard quadratic methods to get the remainder of the roots. What does this tell you? Well, the main technique for factorising higher order polynomials is the ability to spot obvious roots or factors. In this particular case, there was an obvious root, h equals 0. If there's an obvious root, you can get on and factorise. If there isn't an obvious root, you may not be able to do higher order polynomials. So here's a different example. Find the roots and factors of the following polynomial. So k of s equals s squared plus, sorry, s cubed plus s squared minus 2s. And I'm going to assume it's got real roots, so I can write it as s plus a, s plus b times s plus c. Now, again, for this case, it's obvious that s is a factor. And hence, I can write this as s cubed plus s squared minus 2s equals s times s squared plus s minus 2. And so, by inspection, I can now find the remainder of the roots. Because if I look at this polynomial here, and I recognise what we did at the end of video 4, I can see that the sum of the roots is minus 1, and the product of the roots is minus 2. And therefore, what I get is that I must have s plus 2 times s minus 1. Now, if you want to use the quadratic formula and do it more slowly, you can. But I'm going to um, argue that these, this factorization is obvious. So once I've got those additional two roots, I can now write the factorized polynomials s times s plus 2 times s minus 1 with roots at 0, 1 and minus 2. What about more generally? There might not be a factor at the origin, which is clearly an easy one to spot. However, the basic technique is still the same. Spot obvious roots or factors and then use polynomial division to find the remaining factor. Now, we've not really covered polynomial division yet, but that's the key thing. Repeat this process until the remaining factor is quadratic, at which point you can use the quadratic formula. If there are no obvious factors or roots, it's best to resort to a numerical method. And note that in an exam scenario, you won't get things like this because examiners aren't trying to trick you. Okay? Often, but not always, it's easier if you make the polynomial monic before you start. So, here's an example. We're going to give you a polynomial f of x, which has a factor x plus 2. 
and we want you to find the remaining factors and roots. So you've been given a hint here. Here's the polynomial, f of x equals x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6, and you've been told it has a factor x plus 2. So first, I write this out in factorised form, including the factor x plus 2. So here we go. f of x equals x plus 2 times ax squared plus bx plus c. And you'll notice I don't know what values these coefficients are yet. I'm just postulating that I can write it like this. Now what I do is I write it out longhand. So here we go. Um, multiplying out these two brackets, I get ax cubed plus 2a plus b times x squared plus 2b plus c times x plus 2c. And finally, what I'm going to do, if I make a bit of a mess of this screen, so you see, I'm going to take this ax cubed term and I'm going to say this has to be the same as that term. I'm going to take this 2a plus bx squared and say that has to be the same as this 6x squared. I'm going to take this 2b plus cx and say that has to be the same as 11x. And finally, this 2c has to be the same as that 6. So for consistency, if the second factor is ax squared plus bx plus c, these equivalences must hold. So let's see what that implies. So the first implication, ax cubed equals x cubed, tells you that a has got to be 1. The second equivalence, 2a plus b must be equal to 6. Now I've already got that a equals 1, so this is going to give me b equals 4. Next, 2b plus c equals 11. Now, if I've got b equals 4, this is going to give me c equals 3. And finally, 2c equals 6, which confirms for me that c equals 3. Right, so what we've got there, a equals 1, b equals 4, c equals 3. And therefore, my polynomial becomes f of x equals x plus 2 times x squared plus 4x plus 3. Having got to this point, I can now use my by inspection rules to factorise the remaining quadratic of x squared plus 4x plus 3, and I can write down that I've got x plus 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 1. So the roots are at minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. Now the final thing you should do for higher order polynomials, just to be on the safe side, is substitute the roots into the original f of x and check that they are indeed roots. So I'm going to evaluate f of minus 1, okay, using the original polynomial. So if I write down the original polynomial in case you've lost it, it was x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. So I want this to be equal to 0 with the roots that I found. So if I substitute in x equals minus 1 or minus 2 or minus 3, this must give me 0. So if we look at the first example, I'm using minus 1, I get minus 1 cubed plus 6 times minus 1 squared plus 11 times minus 1 plus 6, and you will see that is indeed 0. The next two lines, I'm going to try x equals minus 2 and x equals minus 3, and you'll see in both cases I also get 0. OK, different example. Given a polynomial h of x below, find the factors and roots. So x cubed plus 10x squared plus 29x plus 20. And you might look at this and you think, golly, where do I start? It's not at all obvious. However, the examiner is not going to give it to you if something isn't obvious. So the first thing to do is identify the obvious factors by trial and error. And that's quite important. You need to recognize some trial and error may be necessary, but it won't be overly onerous or you wouldn't be asked. Now, the obvious things to try are low valued integers. So here we go. 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 3. Um, often, the nature of the numbers in the equation will make it obvious what sort of integers to try, um, but I'm not going to go there. That will be for you to learn from experience. Now, clearly, you can see there's a plus 20 here, so x equals 0 cannot be a root, so I discount that one straight away. However, if I try minus 1, 
then you see x cubed gives me minus 1, 10x squared gives me plus 10, 29x gives me minus 29, and 20 gives me plus 20, and I get 0. So very quickly, I've spotted there's a root at minus 1. So minus 1's a root, so there must be a factor x plus 1. And now I can use my polynomial division to find the remaining factors. So here we go. Write out the full polynomial, x cubed plus 10x squared plus 29x plus 20. Then include the factor that I know. So I rewrite this as f of x equals x plus 1 times x squared plus bx plus c. And you'll notice I've written the coefficient of x squared as 1 by inspection because I can see the coefficient of x cubed is 1. And therefore, the coefficient of x squared must also be 1 for this to balance. Now I multiply out these two factors as before. And you'll see I get x cubed plus 1 plus b times x squared plus b plus c times x plus c. And now I'm going to use the same trick as before. I'm going to take this 1 plus bx squared and match it to that 10x squared. I'm going to take this b plus c times x and match it to that 29x. And I'm going to take this c and match it to the 20. Well, although I'm doing this backwards, you can see straight away c must be 20. But we'll do it from left to right, because that's how these slides work. So first of all, 1 plus b equals 10 tells me that b must be 9. b plus c equals 29 tells me that c equals 20, which we'd already determined from the last equation anyway. Right, having got b and c, I can now write out my factorised polynomial as x plus 1 times x squared plus 9x plus 20. So now we want to say, all right, what are the roots of this remaining quadratic? And again, I think you can use the inspection technique covered in the previous video. You can see that 9 is 4 plus 5 and 20 is 4 times 5. And therefore, clearly, this can be written as x plus 1 times x plus 4 times x plus 5. And so the roots are at minus 1, minus 4, and minus 5. And finally, to be on the safe side, substitute the roots into the original h of x and check. So here we go. f of minus 4 equals minus 4 cubed plus 10 times minus 4 squared plus 29 times minus 4 plus 20. And you will see that gives you 0. And similarly, you'll see if you substitute in minus 5, you will get 0. We'd already done minus 1 because that was how we started the whole problem off.